This is the BBC, with the Daily Minutes podcast. Oh no it isn't. I mean this is the Daily Minutes podcast. This is however not the BBC. Daily Minutes, 22 January 2023. This is a bulletin for Sunday. I want to do more of them in English, so uh, I'll make a start of that uh, today. I have a scripted version of the podcast. It's also about offshore radio. I did one in Dutch about offshore radio a few days ago, and, uh, well, I will repeat that in English, but with another subject. During the 60s, we had those offshore radio stations in the Netherlands. There were two of that that had a huge success also commercially. That were Radio Veronica and Radio North Sea International. That uh, last one also broadcast in English on uh, shortwave. And it uh, was for a short time before uh, the coast of Britain, before the coast of England, better to say, in the Thames estuary and broadcast there in English as well. There were also several smaller smaller initiatives, not often well enough thought through, some of which did have moderate success, others failed rather early because of lack of funding or because they simply lost their anchor chain and landed on the beach successively. Capital Radio or Radio Capital was special. They were more ideological than the others and their tune had classical music, which was also odd. They played easy listening music. This was also not done by the other stations. Their deck crew consisted of men and women dressed in uniforms of the navy of a small country, Liechtenstein, which was also peculiar. Liechtenstein is a small landlocked European country that lies in a mountainous region near Austria, Switzerland and Germany and uh, near the Boden Lake, also called Lake Constance. Most impressive though was the antenna they used. Veronica with a 10k W transmitter used a T antenna. This consists of several parallel wires connected together between two moderate masts and a wire that is vertical onto the ship's deck in the middle of the uh, horizontal wires. This vertical wire is the actual radiator. The horizontal wires work as a top load, shortening the antenna with, if everything works right, the vertical wire having the maximum current in the antenna. Radio North Sea had the better antenna, which was almost a quarter wave of the 220 meters medium wave where they transmitted, with powers between 60 and 90 kW. Their antenna was welded onto the ship's deck, hence also used the excellent conductivity of salt water to work as a counterpoise. Motor vessel King David of Capital Radio had a moderate vertical mast that had a hoop very low above the deck that was attached by many wires to the top of the mast. From one end of the hoop there was a vertical pole to the deck. The antenna was a not so familiar so-called DDRR antenna that stands for Directional Discontinuity Ring Radiator. It's a mouthful. (laughs) Uh, It was designed for VHF on ships uh, for a Navy uh, application. And uh, here are two explanations for how the antenna works. One of that is that the small vertical piece is a vertical radiator and the ring, which is relatively uh, small for the wavelength, is a top capacitor. Another, in my opinion, more probable explanation is that it is a so-called slot antenna, where the space between the ring and the counterpoise, here the salty water, is the slot, which is the radiator. Slot antennas, like the Alpha slot, are a lot more common on VHF, and especially UHF and higher, than they are on medium wave. The choice for this particular antenna was kind of a political one. Veronica was criticized because their signal interfered with a few others in Europe, especially during evening hours when ionospheric propagation becomes more prominent. Because a DDRR antenna has a lower angle of inclination, hence it directs more towards the horizon, it is less probable to also cause an airwave. It seemed a good idea. 
But when the ship was on the high waters of the North Sea, it turned out to be having a few problems as well. The ring, for example, kept touching the seawater regularly, especially during rough weather. This made the transmitter switch off for one or two seconds each time it happened and then switching on again. Because of this, the 10kW transmitter on the ship never worked with more output power than only 800 watts. The antenna probably did work very well. In the short time the radio station operated the signal that is one of only 800 watts on 270 meters was stronger than that of Radio Veronica on its first frequency 192 meters and the area it covered was also larger. In addition to that during evenings the range of the signal was very much limited because most of the signal didn't reach the ionosphere. However, after only working for 2 months and 10 days, the ship lost its anchor and using a spare anchor with wind force 9 also didn't work, so the ship landed on the beach near the town of Noordwijk. Because of lack of funding to salvage the ship, this also meant the end of Capital Radio. By the way, for a new podcast item, I'm looking for people to interview. This might be in Dutch, in English or German. And... Well, a wide range of topics are possible. Primarily, it would be uh, radio amateurism, ham radio to begin with, but uh, any other subject except for uh, politics, perhaps, uh, is would be okay. Um, popular science is also a point of interest, but if you have something to mention about micronations, it's also very interesting. Got a lot to tell about that. Offshore radio, any other subject, please let me know if you want to be interviewed. It uh, won't be with cameras, only a microphone and probably via telephone or uh, preferably something like Skype, which has a bit le- a bit better audio than uh, the telephone connection would have, but a telephone is also okay. So if you want to be interviewed, mail me at x at xdv.me and x is x-ray at x-ray delta victor dot mic echo. Title music is by Croatian artist Blasco and is published under Creative Commons. Disclaimer, everything in this podcast, including the accompanying material, as a principle is basically all fiction, although elements of reality may have been incorporated. For social media, I'm on Mastodon. Just search at P-A-0-E-T-E. Deze uitzending wordt opgedragen aan Jurgen van der Broek, voor altijd de joker van België.